it is day five of the Heartbreak Boys road trip and I am in lovely Twickenham, London, with none other than George Lester. Hello. Queen Fame, holding it up there ah. for our audience. Hi, George. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Welcome to Twickenham. Thank you. Lovely to be in sunny Twickenham today. <laughs> Loving it. Uh, just popped down from Lincolnshire, so nice to be down here. Good. Um, George, what have you um, what have you bought to my lovely virtual campfire? Well, to your lovely virtual campfire, I have bought glitter. Mm. Um, funnily enough, I was recording a Q and A video yesterday, and someone asked me about if I could put a fictional character in drag. Who would I want to put in? Yeah. And I chose. Nate from Heartbreak Boys. Oh, did you? Um, yeah, I chose him because I thought let's like drag going getting into drag sort of brings out like a part of your personality, and I think he could do with a little uh, letting loose a little bit. So you know, he does need that the poor boy. He needs a bit of yeah, let loose, a little bit of pizzazz, and let go and kind of find the real him. Absolutely. Oh, I like your thinking. I like your thinking. Um, George, I uh, I finished Boy Queen last week. I thought it ah. was stunning. I loved it. I think um, it's exactly my sort of thing because it is. It's funny. It's warm hearted. It's a bundle of joy, and, and you know the story is a roller coaster as well, which of course ticks all of my boxes. Um, <laughs> but do you want to tell us, just in case um, people haven't yet encountered it or read, uh, uh, obviously they haven't read it yet. It's not out yet. But um, but what it's what it's basically about. What's the what's the premise of, of Boy Queen? Uh, so, um, first of all, thank you so much. Um, uh, boy Queen is the story of um, a teenage boy called Robin Cooper, who right at the beginning of the book um, is so sure that he's going to be going to drama school come September. That is until a bunch of rejection letters come through his door and all of his dreams are thrown out the window. Um, in a bid to cheer him up, his best friends take him to um, a local gay club called Entity um, and a show called Dragsolence, where he sees a drag queen who goes by the name of Kay Bai, um, and in seeing Kay Bai, he realises that there may be like a more glittery future ahead of him via the art of drag. So it's a coming of age story with um, a whole lot of camp and a whole lot of drag and a little bit of love and romance in there as well, for good measure. <laughs> hooray, hooray for that. Now, you mentioned um, performing arts in there and, and the drag scene. Mm -hmm. Now, when, uh, when my first book, uh, Noah Can't Even, came out, a lot of people were asking me, to what extent it was autobiographical, which I mean, you know, is is fine, but it's clearly how they see me, some sort of geek <laughs> disaster, um, which is fine. They're not entirely far wrong, but like with your with 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 Boy Queen, then to what extent, um, you know, is, is are, are there elements which are autobiographical in this, um, or, or things that you've drawn upon at least from your own life, which were a source of kind of inspiration for it? Yeah, absolutely. Like, um, so I'm a I'm a theatre kid at heart. Um, I when I was, uh, I started doing drag as part of my master's degree in musical theatre. So that's a very like recent thing. Um, when I was 18, I was auditioning for drama schools and just like Robin, I got rejected from everywhere. Um, and it totally crushed me. Unfortunately, I didn't have a fabulous drag queen to like lift my spirits again, but like, you know, uh, <laughs> we get by. Um, so that part of my life, um, I definitely kind of, I wanted to put that in there um, and when he is first watching a drag show, it's a perfect mirror to when I was sat um, at a place called the Apple Tree in Clerkenwell, uh, watching none other than Cheryl Hull, <laughs> pre-drag race, yeah. um, performing. And I'd just finished my show. I'd just finished the essay that I needed to write alongside that. And I was just sat there crying. because it was like, I want to do drag so much. Like <laughs> I was, so I kind of stole that as well. So like a couple of, little parallels but a lot of it is um a lot of it is fictional but I stole some things from my own life um because I don't know sometimes what is it what's the phrase truth is stranger than fiction <laughs> that's the phrase isn't it yeah absolutely I know exactly what you mean it's basically the answer I give as well you know little little elements picked out you know and um, but yeah, the, the performing arts aspect came through very strongly because my background is in theatre as well, not, yes. as a, not as a performer. I was, I was a director originally and that, that's kind of my background too. So when I was reading those bits about, I think he auditions for the Hillview, doesn't he? Hillview mm. Drama School. Which I wonder what that could be. <laughs> it's a completely fictional uh, drama school that he auditioned for there, but I, that amused me uh, highly. <laughs> <laughs> I think all of them are takes. All of them are takes on like, um, I think so. Yeah. Because I know there was Hillview. Yeah. Um, which was obviously 
yeah. Mountain View. Um, yeah. And I think I did a take on Art Z. Yeah, I think you did. Yeah. And I, I don't know what I don't know whether Laffer is LCM or whether it's GSA, but it's one of the oh, two. Yeah. <laughs> Or LSMT, whatever it is, they love an abbreviation. In oh, I love an abbreviation, um, but it's a great world to write about, anyway, isn't it? And the whole sort of performing arts aspect, I think, brings such energy into pieces of work, anyway, that it's it's fantastic. Yeah, and I think it's so like you're so in it, like when you're doing it, you're so very much in it. So it really does become like the be all and end all. So it like because <laughs> because you're doing drama uh, like so often that it's sort of the reactions to things sort of feed into your own life and suddenly everything is everything is everything all the time which is yes, kind yes. of my life a little bit <laughs> no, totally right I'm not, you know that's what I mean musical theatre especially is absolutely like that isn't it you know it's mm. soaring highs and crushing lows and I think absolutely. actually that does replicate the kind of teenage experience in YA quite often anyway mm. in terms of how you're feeling at that kind of age so it makes perfect sense um, to me um George tell me about because this is your debut your debut book tell me because lots of people want to know um how how you how it happened for you what was your route into actually getting published um so my route was very different um to how so to like the traditional route if there is such a thing um I've had a literary agent for a number of years now there have been several many books that have gone out on submission and remain in a desk drawer unloved yeah. by anyone but me and my agent yeah. um but with this one um my editor um Rachel Petty um got in touch with me um because she knew that I was doing my master's degree in musical theater um she was see she could she was seeing that I was doing drag and she said um I've had a dream about a YA novel where a teenage boy wants to be a drag queen. Um, I think you should write it. Um, so I wrote a sample, this was last August. So yeah. I wrote a sample, I wrote a synopsis. Um, actually, I wrote a terrible sample that she then like gave me notes on. And then I wrote a better sample and a synopsis. Um, and then they bought it. And then I had to like write a book in five seconds flat and- Amazing, often the best way. I'm a great believer in speed. <laughs> Oh my god, like exquisite pressure to the absolute max. It was like, I have to write this before November because I'm yeah. going to Orlando, Florida. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going on holiday, I need to finish this book. And I was in a show at the same time. Like, there is nothing quite like, honestly, it was the wildest time of my life because it was so like, oh my god, these are like the two things that I want to do with my life happening at the same time. Um, because it was like, I was in a show of an evening, I was writing during the day. I've never yeah. felt so bougie and fabulous in my life. <laughs> It's a dream come true. Absolute dream. It was, it was just that weird thing of like, I'm just going to write 5,000 words and then I'm going to go to the theatre. It was great. <laughs> Oh my God! Yeah, no, that is that is that is the that is the dream, isn't it? It's perfect. Oh, absolute yeah. dream boat. It was great. <laughs> oh, George, it has been fabulous talking to you. We need to we need to wrap it up because I think I've got to get on the road to my next destination. But who am I seeing next, and where am I going? You are on your way down to Kent to see the wonderful Alice Oseman. Oh my God! How exciting! I can't wait. Much That's excitement. Lovely uh, spending time with you in Twickenham. Thank you. Yes. And Thank you so much for coming. I, you know, it's a pleasure to drop by. I'll, I'll go to the <laughs> right now. Thanks, George. No worries. Bye. <laughs>